Moulding is a process whereby melted plastic is injected into a mould and then cooled to form a part. Extrusion is a similar process, but that plastic is squeezed through a hole to form a tube. I'm here at the first meeting in Europe of these two technologies dedicated to medical. We've got all these machines running in action in Chesterfield, UK. Open houses like this one at Ferromatic Millicron in the UK are becoming more and more popular in the plastics industry, especially as machinery manufacturers are reconsidering the cost of moving heavy machinery to and from trade shows. In February, Engel held their first medical plastics open house conference, Med.com, the day before MedTech Europe, taking advantage of passing visitors, having all their machinery under one roof and having quiet meeting rooms right, right, right next door to the machines. This, this event is probably, as far as we can tell, the first time that we've had a medical open house in the UK. Um, that's combined with injection moulding of medical devices, as you can see across the, the area there, and the, the single screw extrusion for catheter or any uh, fine tubing or single lumen. That, that hasn't been available in the UK, so this is a, a first time one-off event. My name is Mike Johan, I'm with uh, the Cincinnati Millicron based out of uh, the US and um, we're here at our open house here in, in, um, in the UK. And what we have here is a, uh, what we call a MPAC 100 medical extruder. Um, we are processing a uh, flexible medical grade PVC. It's non, non halogenated. And um, what we do is, uh, what we're doing here is we're extruding a pelletized PVC, medical grade, um, on a one inch extruder or 25 millimeter. Um, the machine set up um, for medical applications um, as far as uh, the stainless steel covers and some of the metallurgy that's on the machine is set up to be able to use in a clean room application. So what we're doing is we're taking the polymer in here in its solid form and then we're what we call plasticating it uh, through the machine um, and inside we have what would be called a screw of a geometry suitable for these materials. We match the material, the screw design to the material. So if this was a different material going in this machine, we could have a bit different geometry on the screw. So we go from a solid to a melt phase. We come out to the exit end of the extruder to where we're going to go into what we call cross tooling here. The melt flow is going to come in, then it's going to go into the, into the uh, cross head where there's actually what we call tooling, which will go now and change that material flow from this direction to the inline direction. And inside of there, we have a tip and a die. The tip forms the inside of the tube, the die forms the outside of the tube, and then it exits into the tank. This particular die is gonna, you know, you could have inline dies, which the die would be the, this way. This is a cross head. This has the ability to blow air into it if you need to very small tubes. We could use micro air uh, control for the ID and blow the tube up here where this is Bob had talked through, we're sizing it. Um, but you could actually um, blow air in the back to give size control. Um, you know, very, it's a very low volume head because we don't want a lot of volume in the tool uh, for degrading the material. So it's very, very matched that way. My name is Bob Bessemer. I'm the downstream sales manager for uh, medical extrusion at Con Air. And today we're going to show you a small medical microbore line where we're making taper tubing. So we're actually using the vacuum to create a differential in the tank. So we're actually using the vacuum to hold the water so it doesn't pour out. Just enough vacuum to differential pressure. So we can control this water drooling so we can have the tube going in and critically control the concentricity. Inside the tank, we do have a wall monitor, so we're, we're monitoring the wall thickness as we're processing. And we are making what's called a taper tube today, so we're purposely having the puller. You'll notice it's speeding up and it's slowing down. So we're doing what's called a velocity profile with a puller to make two different diameters of a tube. So we're purposely telling it to go from one speed with the small diameter, we're going at about 55 feet a minute, then we slow it down to about 25 feet a minute. So we're in line making a tapered tube, a transition tube. 
So we've got air feed cutter bushings. We're using compressed air. And we can adjust the amount of air. It actually causes a little bit of suction, sucking the tube in. You can see the diameter changing as the tube's going in. But this is a very flexible tube. Normally you have to keep running right up against. And we're just showing that you could run it this far away and still lead. We're being asked to run very, very small tubing these days that are very flexible that many times you have to cut offline. And we're able to do it right online. As far as Europe and the medical market, um, we have a fair number of inquiries at the moment from some of the larger dialysis manufacturers. Um, they want to do high speed, high volume manufacture of the medical tubing and uh, they want to try and keep the whole operation in house and certainly there's a couple of our customers that we've been working with at the moment. They have cells of injection molding machines and they'll produce the dialysis tubing or the pillory line. They'll, they'll chop, they'll cut to, um, cut to size and then they'll do the tipping and they'll, they'll put the fitments on and they'll actually supply not just the individual items now, it's quite popular for them to actually supply a complete medical package. So that would be if we take example a dialysis situation, you see the dialysis machine on the on the um, bedside manner uh, when you're in the hospital. That dialysis machine is not actually made up and laced up by a technician anymore to save money and to uh, probably improve quality at the point of operation. They have a system that's on a flat pack, predetermined with different size tubing, and we've got some of that tubing at the end of the line there. So you'll have 12 millimeter tube to go around the dialysis pump. They'll have fittings on. They'll then go down to six millimeter or eight millimeter tube. That'll have um, connectors which will allow to flow control. Um, and all this will be on a blister pack polystyrene sheet. And all the technician has to do is physically get that sheet, which is in a, a clean room bagged article, and physically just undo it and put it on the dialysis machine. And it's pre-set up. All he has to do then is connect the tipped end catheter to the regulator valve and, and run from there. So it, it sort of revolutionizes how big volume dialysis manufacturers move from various tubes and bags being set up by a, a technician by the side of the, the bed where the um, patient is, to really putting that into more of the manufacturer's a supply, he's supplying a one-shop or one-stop uh, system. So that would involve not just the extrusion line, but also the injection moulding. And Millicron's been supplying a lot of the injection moulding machines to the medical and medical packaging industry for sort of 20 years or more. So it's a very familiar and uh, popular aspect that we have. And we find the crossover from injection molding companies to extrusion companies. It's quite popular. Normally you go into one and you see a whole shop of injection molding machines next door um, or vice versa. Let's just ju jump into the, into the process, uh, in the middle of the process. On one side, or the moving side, we load needles into the mold. The needles are held by a special device. And in parallel, we take out the finished goods out of the of the mold in the second stage. The system, the type of the mold with the, some type of a steak mold is patented by Zaransky. So that means we don't lose any cycle time by loading the needles while we take out the uh, the finished good for the mold. Not only the the, the steak needles syringes as a product, we can't we, you can't use this product uh, as a finished good. We are. We, we, we must have a downstream automation for siliconizing and this is also the further automation we are uh, delivering on this cell. But before the needle is loaded, it must be separated with our needle feed system, uh, which is designed by, uh, by Zaransky. Coming from the history Zaransky has from the separation of filaments for the toothbrush business, um, where individual needles with a certain size and length are provided to the molding machine.